Hello, Todd here from Great Escape Farms. In front of me, I have an autumn olive plant, which is also known as a Ligonus umbellate. It is a deciduous shrub or a multi-trunked tr multi tree that can reach as high as 20 feet tall. It is drought tolerant and it likes full sun or partial shade. It is, it can be used in, or it is often used in a forest garden design to assist in repairing soil of the forest, of the food forest garden as the food forest garden matures. Autumn olive is one of the few non-legume plants that fixes nitrogen in the soil. The plant has self-fertile flowers, so you don't need another one around for the berries to become ripe. And they have red and gold berries. I have both out at my farm. These plants can become uh, invasive and you cannot prop or you're not allowed to propagate these in West Virginia. I don't know about the rest of the country. So I am in Maryland. I have this one which I actually bought and planted here. I have propagated from it and I have some autumn olive that I'm propagating this year. I'm not doing this variety. Uh, I will take some cuttings and just show you how to do it, but I'm not going to take this one. I have some actual named hybrid red and gold berries, berry autumn olives. So these do produce edible berries. They're very astringent. They can be used in pies and jellies and jams and stuff like that. By astringent, if you put it in your mouth, it will kind of make you, make you pucker a little. Uh, they are high in lycopene and some other antioxidants and the birds love them and that's part of the reason that they can become invasive because the birds eat the, eat the berries and the seeds and kind of spread them around on you. So what you do is you take the, in order to propagate them, you take the, uh, the new wood, which actually on this one is all the way back here. You can see the difference in color here. That's very dark and this one is light. So this one is spread out quite a bit. The, I, I said that it was nitrogen fixing. So what that means is that it has a symbiotic relationship with uh, bacteria in the soil and it creates nitrogen in the root nodules as well as in the leaves and elsewhere. So as you trim back the upper part, the branches and stuff like that, it kind of trims off some of the roots underneath in the ground and that makes it bioavailable to other plants. So I have one, the one that I have is right here, which is next to a cherry tree. I also have another one right here, which is next to an apple tree. So both of these I trim back from time to time and it gives nitrogen to kind of uh, organically fertilize these and then what I'll do is the pieces that I trim off here I'll either propagate or I'll just drop on the ground and let it become mulch that provides nitrogen to the plants. So again we'll take new plants here or we will take the new leaves here let me break that so you see it broke it's a little bit fibrous so this is actually semi softwood so softwood would simply break and not be fibrous at all uh, semi softwood is fibrous like this is and hardwood is more fibrous it's kind of very hard and hardwood is taken it's the first year after it grows and it's taken in the winter time when there's no leaves on it when it's dormant so with semi softwood I'm going to use a medium hormone mixture which is a uh, 10 parts water to one part hormone and we'll talk about that when we get to the rooting hormone in a minute. So for right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and trim off some uh, just a couple of pieces here to show you how I go about propagating these. Uh, I'm, like I say I'm not going to put these in the propagation bed but I'll just go through and show you the way that it's done and then We'll go through the process here in a minute. So let me get some trimmings and I'll head to the table and we'll hit the next step. Hey guys, quick sidebar here on tools. So you can use whatever tool you want, a pair of scissors, a sharp knife, a pair of cutters like I have here, just uh, trimmers. What you want is something that's very, very sharp that will cut without bruising the cambium of the uh, wood that you're cutting. So the cambium is the soft part where the water goes up. You don't want to bruise that. You want to actually cut that. So make sure your tools are very sharp, whatever you're using. Also make sure they're clean. 
So I clean mine after every type of plant I use, that I do. So if I'm doing uh, Adam's elderberry, before I move to a John's elderberry, I'll clean it. I, I may do a hundred cuts on an Adam's elderberry, and I'll only clean it the first time before I do it. And then before I move on to a John's or a Nova elderberry, I will go ahead and clean it again. So I'm grabbing these just out of the shed. I can't remember if I cleaned it last time, so I'm gonna start off by cleaning. The way that I'm gonna clean is I'm just gonna take some regular hand sanitizer here, whatever type you are into, and put a couple squirts on a paper towel. And by that, next I'm just gonna rub it on the tool all along here. And I'm not so much worried about getting dirt off as I am worried about killing any fungus or bacteria or any kind of disease that would spread from plant to plant. So I want to make sure, and this, this hand sanitizer will kill any of that stuff. So all I need to do is rub it on the whole area, go ahead and wipe it off, and then we are good to go. So now I'm going to go ahead and make my cuts. Okay guys, I'm here to make up the rooting hormone solution uh, for this section of the video. So I use the Diff and Grow liquid uh, rooting hormone solution. That's a picture of what it looks like. You open it up and there's all kinds of warnings on it saying not to get on your skin and everything. If you have sensitive skin, you might want to use rubber gloves. In here it does talk about different dosages to use, which is why I like the liquid stuff. So for hardwood cuttings, you use a one to five ratio. For medium, hard, medium softwood cuttings, you use a 10 to one ratio. And for softwood cuttings, you use a 20 to one ratio. So I am working with softwood cuttings here. So I am gonna mix 20 to one. I actually measured this out earlier. So for me, it's a cap and a half uh, of this solution in this particular container here mixed with water. And then I fill it up at three quarters or I filled up three quarters with water. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix that up real quick. So there's one cap and then about a half. And then I'm gonna fill this three quarters of the way up with water. And that's about three quarters. And now my rooting hormone is ready to go. So, okay, so I have the one autumn olive here that I bent over, I just snipped a piece off. So what we're looking here for here is four uh, nodules here where the leaves connect up. They're actually called internodes. So each place where a leaf connects up is called an internode. We're looking for four to six of those. I'm taking five, I've been taking five today. So I go up one, two, three, four, five leaves and I just trim it off. So what we want is two leaves at the top. So we're gonna take off the bottom three leaves. What I do is there's the two I want just kind of grab it and pull it off like that. So that way I have two at the bottom. And then what we do is we just dip this in rooting hormone for five seconds. And then after that, pull it out, shake off the excess. And at that point, it's ready to go to the mist irrigation system. So we'll take a wander on over there. We'll talk about the mist irrigation system and then we'll show you how we actually put one of these in the ground. So this is my mist irrigation bed here. I have two nozzles here, one here and one right there, two mist nozzles. And they're gonna come on in just a few seconds. I ha there we go, you can see they are on. So they're both on right now and they're overlapping one another. And what they're doing is they're just spraying a fine mist down on the plants here. And they come on once every five minutes for 10 seconds. And you can see the water kind of dripping off of the leaves here. And I have it set up to come on at 6 a.m. and to shut off at 9 p.m. So it's not running during the night, only during the heat of the day. And that's to prevent transfer, transpiration and to keep the water, keep the leaves moist so that they don't burn or anything. And that way they will have uh, something with photosynthesis to actually allow it to make roots. So that's the mist part here. When I'm actually planting in a couple of minutes, I'll shut these down because I'm gonna have the iPhone real close. I don't wanna soak yet. A couple other things. So I have a document right here and it has numbers on the side, uh, over here on the row on the far left-hand side. And you see it says row two, four, six, eight. And that row two is John's elderberry. Row four is non-applicable. Row six is Adam's elderberry. Nothing in row eight yet, but that's where I'm going to be putting the 
uh, Illinois Everbearing Mulberry that I have. And then you'll notice that in row 14, I also have Illinois Everbearing Mulberry. I took some earlier in the year, but they're not doing so well. So I wanted to wait and take some a little bit later in the year. So what I do is I put down a tape measure from the end. Row two is at two inch mark. Row four is at four and there's nothing there. Row six is where my elderberry is. Row eight is where the mulberry will be. And you can see I'm right on top. I, what I do is I put a piece of wood, a piece of bamboo that came in with a plant here, and that allows me to keep my row straight. So I will have all the rows in here and make sure that you document. So on my document here, I have uh, the quantity that I planted and in the notes section, I have little notes here. So I have an A on that one, I have a B on that one and I put down here when I planted it and well, let's see, for A, I used powder rooting, rooted, powdered rooting hormone and for row B, I still need to mark it but I use liquid rooting hormone there. Today will be row C because I am in August and I'll have a different day so I will put the date planted and the fact that I'm using liquid rooting hormone there. So real quick, let me talk about the rest of the mist system irrigation bed here. So the mist heads, uh, they're DRAM, D-R-A-M-M -M, mist heads that feed into a uh, one inch PVC pipe here, which goes into a, uh, let's see, a lawn sprinkler here. This runs into an electric wire, which I have back in my shed back there. And that has a Galcon 8056 ACS, I think it is, uh, programmable sprinkler valve that shuts these on and off. And like I said, it's on from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. for uh, every five minutes, it comes on for 10 seconds at a time. So that's how it comes on and off is with the timer. My input is right here and I have another piece going off to the side that's for future use. Right now it's just dead ended and not used. And I go into a water filter here. This water filter is designed to remove any chlorine and stuff like that. So I'm giving it straight filtered water at least. And I'm just coming out of a garden hose. Okay guys, I don't want you to see me here. Uh, I got the camera set back a little because I didn't shut the water off this time. I have the autumn olive here uh, and my pole. My pole is measured out so I can actually make it uh, into a straight line. I take the autumn olive, I start in the center, I push it down about an inch to an inch and a half and I work towards the outside with each additional cutting. That allows me to put it in a straight line, see how many I'm putting in and put it in the right spacing in between. I'll space these about an inch and a half or so apart because these things do root pretty good. If I put it the usual inch apart, they will tend to kind of uh, not up a little. So uh, that's how I plant autumn olive. It, do me a favor and subscribe to the YouTube channel or go to greatescapefarms.com and subscribe for our email list. I hope you enjoyed the show and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining us.